Okay, in this video, we are going to look at redox reactions with a couple goals. Goal number one is we are going to identify reduced and oxi oxidized reactants. Goal number two is we're going to identify the reducing agent and oxidizing agent, which we're going to see is different than um, reduced and oxidized, but these are also going to be reactants. And just so that you remember, the reactants are on the left side reactants and they go to products which are on the right side products are produced reactants go like that okay so in order to identify oxidation and reduction really what we're going to look at is uh, a f there's many different ways and it depends on the specific reaction that you're looking at and there's these are the three main ones that I kind of look at. Um, it can be considered four, and in many textbooks they separate hydrogens and electrons. Uh, but really, if you're gaining hydrogens, you're gaining electrons. So I, in my own mind, I group these together. Okay, so let's do some different, some fun colors here. Okay, so for oxidation, what you're looking for from reactant to product if that product has an increase in the number of oxygens compared to the reactant, that's considered oxidation. Okay, reduction happens at the same time as oxidation, but is really its opposite. So if we see an increase in oxygens and oxidation, as the name kind of implies, so I like starting with that one, in reduction we would expect to see a decrease in the number of oxygens comparing the products to the reactants. The products will have fewer oxygens than the reactants. Okay, <clears throat> so the next category, uh, maybe your compounds don't have any oxygens. That's absolutely possible. So that's not 100% reliable 100% of the time. It really depends on the chemical reaction you're looking at. So the next thing we can look at are hydrogens or electrons. Uh, so hydrogens are really visible. That's the symbol, chemical symbol H. Electrons are sometimes invisible. Electrons, remember, have a negative charge. Uh, so sometimes you can tell if something's being reduced or oxidized, but if it's getting more negative, then therefore it's going to be gaining electrons, gaining negative charges. Okay, so for oxidation, what we see is actually a decrease in electrons, a decrease in hydrogens. We'll talk more about that in a second. And for reduction, we see an increase. And as you notice, oxidation and reduction, in, according to this little table, they're really going in opposite directions here. Okay. So that's something else we can look at. Maybe it doesn't have oxygens, maybe it has hydrogens, maybe it has charges that we're kind of looking at. And then the final category that we're going to talk about is oxidation number. So if your oxidation number is increasing, and this is related to charge, there's some rules for that. Um, and we're not going to discuss in this video, but if the oxidation number goes up, then it is oxidation. If the oxidation number goes down, then it's reduction. Okay, and so I think that you can really kind of see the pattern here. For the number of oxygens, in one side it goes up, on the other side it goes down. Same with hydrogens, electrons, same with oxidation number. So what you should really res be responsible for is remembering oxidation, increase in oxygens, increase in oxidation number, decrease in hydrogens or electrons. And then reduction is the opposite. So if you have one of these really down, you'll kind of understand the rest. So let's go ahead and apply this in a nice little example here. And I'm going to use rust because why not? So iron plus oxygen. We leave our iron out in the air, normal air. And what we end up with is Fe2O3 or iron 3 oxide. So let's go ahead and quickly balance this. So we've got three oxygens on one side, two on the other. We're going to I'm switching those coefficients. Now we have six, four total irons, four total irons. Okay, so this is our balanced chemical equation. So now what we need to do is compare the products and the reactants. Okay, so we've got iron over here 
becoming iron three oxide. What you notice is that this has gained oxygen. And from here, we know that an increase in oxygen means that it is oxidation. Therefore, the iron is oxidized. So the answer to whether or not something is oxidized or reduced, the answer is always going to be a reactant. So it's always going to be on the left-hand side. So if one is oxidized, then the other one should be reduced. And let's just do this just to kind of like look at it. So oxygen O2 is becoming Fe2O3. So this one's like pure oxygen. So really this is like kind of diluting the oxygen. 100% of these molecules are oxygen. Here it's less than 100%. So you can really consider that as um, lost, lost oxygen. And so therefore it is reduced. Okay, so we have iron gained oxygen, therefore it is oxidized. Oxygen became reduced. So you're always going to have one thing oxidized, one thing reduced. Redox reactions happen together. And really fundamentally what's happening is something is gaining and the other thing is losing. And you cannot gain anything unless something else is lost, if that makes any sense. Okay, so the next thing, so that's how you kind of identify reduced and oxidized reactants. And so there's different rules for this. If it's gaining H's or um, if it's gaining H's, it's reduction. If it's losing H's, it's oxidation. Or you could look at oxidation number. There's many videos on oxidation number. Okay, um, if you want to clarify that. So the next tricky thing is that we need to look at identifying reducing agents and oxidizing agents. Okay, and I'm going to use maybe blue and orange for this one. Okay, so the agents cause whatever they're named for. So an oxidizing agent will cause oxidation. So let's write that down really quick. Oxidizing agents cause oxidation. And similarly, reducing agents cause reduction. And you might have to pause and think about it. Okay, so what you want to do here is you probably let go ahead and use this opportunity to pause the video. And in this reaction, iron combining with oxygen gas forming iron 3 oxide, Go ahead and take a moment to figure out what's going to be the reducing agent and what's going to be the oxidizing agent. And remember, these are still going to be reactants, so that should narrow it down for you. So go ahead, pause the video, and then after you have your answer, hit resume. Okie dokie. Okay, so our oxidizing agents cause oxidation. So we know that iron is oxidized so that means that this oxygen is causing the iron to become oxidized therefore the oxidizing the oxidizing agent is reduced it causes oxidation the oxygen is the oxidizing agent and a lot of times oxidizing agents have oxygens in them or they are oxygen, oxygen gas, for example. Okay, and let's do, what color haven't I used? I haven't used green in a while. Okay, okay, so how about the reducing agent? These cause reduction. Okay, so the, the oxygen caused the oxidation. The oxygen itself became reduced. The other thing caused the reduction. So the iron, it became oxidized, but it is the reducing agent. And this is really tricky. It's very difficult conceptually to wrap your mind around it. 
something becomes oxidized, but is the reducing agent. So you might have to sit and really think about this and find some additional examples in order to really fully appreciate that um, oh, the electron transfers that are going on here. Okay, and I'm going to leave you with one final thought to remember like what's really going on. There's a couple different acronyms that you can use. This one's one of my favorites. Leo the lion says Gur. And what this really means is loss of electrons is oxidation. Gaining electrons is reduction. If one thing is losing electrons, the other thing is gaining electrons. One cannot happen without the other. That's why we're able to abbreviate reduction oxidation to redox. And I hope that this video was at least mildly helpful to you with this extremely confusing subject that you definitely have to do more practice problems with. Thank you.